Hey, it's JC, and welcome back. This week, we're going to talk about something very serious and something that I get asked about surprisingly enough to do a video on. I'm going to show you my editing workflow on my iPad. This is my iPad. There are many like it, but this one is mine, and I do all my edits on it. So sit back, relax for the next few minutes, and listen to me bang on about how I edit stuff, and maybe you could learn a thing or two. M maybe. We'll see. So first off, what I would do is I would get myself a Mountain Dew. And then I would drink it. All good editing starts with a good workflow. And for me, it's Mountain Dew. Alright, so this is what you need to get started. You need an iPad with hilarious camera reflection. Apple Pencil, this is optional. You need a dongle thing. This is not the official one, this is a third party one that I got on the cheap. Mountain Dew, lack of self-respect, and your camera. These are the steps, follow along if you would like to. First, you pick up your camera. Um, actually first, the very first step is to go out and take a bunch of terrible photos, which is what I've done this morning. And so what I'm going to do now, is conserve battery and I'm going to show you what I do. You remove your card. The pen F is like really, really difficult to get out. All right, so now it's out. Your camera is effectively useless. Focus, okay. So next, dongle time. All you need to do is stick your card in your dongle. You'll see I label mine with what cameras I'm using. This one is the Pen F. Focus. There we go. This is the Pen F's little card thingy. And in we go. Now we're in and we're ready to go. So, all you do is plug it in. And now we're plugged in. Oh, hi Matt, how you doing baby? So, next step is you need to get your files from your cool little dongle thingy onto your iPad. Now, whoa, camera chill. Now, there is a way to do it using uh, Apple Scripts. However, I found for my purpose, it is a little too laggy and it doesn't quite work as well as I would have hoped. So, what we are going to do is we're going to go into the iPad and we're going to start our edit process. So, come along for the ride. Right, so now we are in the iPad and what we are going to do is import our photos. Super easy, open up the photos app. Hi hey Matt, how you doing? Click on the import button, select your gear, which will select everything. I usually just go by day. So here I've got uh, 31 items. Most of them I've done one-time shots, but there's a couple that I've allowed for exposure. I've taken a few shots inside, a few shots outside, and I'm going to show you how I get it done. So next step is just to hit import, import selected, and it'll do its thing. It's USB-C, so it's pretty fast. Right. So now that's done, I always delete them from the, the card once they're on the iPad and now they're gone. So now it's on the iPad. We don't need this little dongle thingy anymore. He's out of the way and totally useless to us. So next step is to open up Lightroom. Now we've got Lightroom cranking. Ooh, no parking, shut it. What we need to do is import our photos. Now I've got mine set to auto import. So you can see here that it's pulling in the photos reasonably quickly. So what I'm going to do is wait for that to happen. And in the meantime, drink Mountain Dew. So first things first, I typically edit the outside photos first. This is what I do and play along if you are interested. First step is to apply a preset. Unfortunately, you can't apply import presets 
at this time so this applies for as long as Adobe don't do that which could be a while so first things first is I will go through my list to see what works could be a little bit of maybe a film simulation maybe I might do the G munchies plus three although that's kind of underexposed um, there's legend status one and two um, my legend plan 400 black and white preset but typically I've been doing the sponsored by Squarespace preset which looks just right hilariously it works immediately this preset was specifically built for the pen F but I have managed to tweak it for the rest so the next step I will now I've got this right I'll play with the colors a little bit I think it's a little bit there we go I think that's right Got the cool cigarettes down there and this wonky donkey couch now I'm, I'm reasonably happy with this I think I might pull the shadows a little, no, that's about right so I'm happy with this uh, this yeah I'm happy with this so next I will straighten because I hate wonky photos I very rarely do it myself I just let Adobe do it it's usually pretty right so now I'm done so this is actually I'm going to crop this guy up a little bit because for some reason it got my feet and that's annoying so we'll get rid of that bang and we're done so now we're cropped it's not quite in the center that's going to annoy me oh. so let's get this in the center and we're done all right so now we're finished now what we will do is we will apply this to the remaining photos the next step is to very simply copy the adjustments and then straighten up each shot as you go and we'll drop the exposure where we need to but that's it this is literally all I'm going to do for the remainder as you can see these are not phenomenal photos they are simply photos that I took to show you how I would edit these and we'll straighten this guy and we're done actually I don't mind this one it's not too bad not too bad the downside obviously is when you change the exposure too high on one photo you need to be aware of that and drop it on the next one I'll pull this up a little bit and we're done what is that shoe doing there I never know I will never know shopping carts hilarious uh, a coin laundry maybe yeah. um, now this is annoying change it back I like my photos to be a little yellow so I typically use typically shoot DNG or whatever the raw format is on the camera that I'm using and I will find a nice yellow cast feels a bit more real I could be wrong of course here's a shot of my daughter I won't straighten that one and here she is playing on the play equipment generally being a legend here's here's the difference here typically she moves around a lot I like this one not as much bye bye and I will copy the adjustments and we're done it's that simple oh what are you I must have taken this shot in my undies next Here's another hilarious shot. I took this one because it looks like someone weed on the tree. At this point, I'm just doing things to entertain myself. I think that will do. Cloudy still applies well. And on to the next thing. Not quite sure what I was doing with this one. Ugh a snore fest on that one and it's gone hey this could be the, my favorite shot 
I'll come back and fix the white balance on that one. Some of you may be thinking, yo, what's up with all the rubbish on the road? This is the road, this is the nature strip, that's the footpath, aka sidewalk for my American friends. So, in Australia we have this weird thing called hard rubbish collection that your local council organises and generally people just leave their crap out on the nature strip and then every six months in a, in a particular time of the year they come by and collect all your shit for you. Anyway, what we need to do now is change the white balance to suit the shot. So this was shot inside and backlit because I'm an amateur. Let's see what color cast works best for us. These things are like bright white. So we try and replicate this as best we can. Contrast. Yeah. That'll probably do it. Let's try and chop this table out a little. Let's get the bottom of this table done. Get out of the way. Scoot you across. Straighten you up. And we're done. Love it. Great hipster-esque shot. So that's it. That's that's how I do my editing. I pretty much don't. I don't have a backlog. I just edit as I go. I can edit, as you can see. I I just edited really quickly in the space of a few minutes, and it was. This is how I edit every day. Every time I go out shooting, I can edit on the way home. Um, I'm done by the. I get off the train and I'm ready to go home and upload the stuff up onto Instagram or wherever it's it's super easy I gotta say I would suggest you give it a try even if you just install the app and just see how it goes I found that the more I used it the easier it became so maybe instead of looking for new storage or when you've got the opportunity to pause and think about your approach to things maybe just try a different approach see how it goes it worked for me and I've been doing this for the last few months now and it's worked perfectly to the point that I'm never going to go back to using Lightroom Classic I can't see that being in my future most things are going cloud now and I just I just don't have time to manage an, an additional device why do I need to manage my own library and then the storage it sits on when I can just make Adobe do that? I'll just outsource it. So for me, this works really well. Hopefully you learned something. Um, if you would like my presets or if you'd like me to make you one or something, hit me a comment or what have you. Otherwise, that's it for this week not much more coming between now and Christmas except for one video at the Melbourne Cup which is going to be pretty fun but for now good goodbye that's it <laughs>